let's continue now so when Faustus says all these things Mephistopheles give him a dagger okay so that Faustus can kill himself because if he kill himself definitely he is going to go to hell because you are committing a suicide and when a person commits a, commit a suicide it's a sin so and Mephistopheles wants that so Mephistopheles gives him a dagger but in the meantime the old man again gives Faustus a suggestion you see see the text old man ah stay good Faustus stay thy desperate steps I see an angel hovers over the head and with a vial full of precious grass offers to put the same into thy soul then call for mercy and avoid despair so old man is saying that ah wait good Faustus do not commit the desperate act of killing yourself so he's giving a suggestion because he knows very well killing yourself means a, a, a suicide he that definitely he'll be damned so again he's giving a suggestion i see an angel hovering over over your head now this angel has brought a uh what do you say a container of precious heavenly grace which he is prepared to pour into your soul therefore beg god's mercy and do not despair so he's saying i see a heavenly angel is, is hovering over your head so you just beg mercy <clears throat> now all your sin will be dissolved now foster says that ah my sweet friend now foster is feeling you know something good that somebody is suggesting suggesting a very good advices or giving some good advices to foster so he's saying the foster is saying ah my sweet friend i feel the words to comfort my distressed soul you see his soul has been totally distressed distressed soul leave me a while to ponder on my sins so foster is saying ah my sweet friend your words are a great comfort to my troubled soul okay leave me alone for some time so that i may meditate on my sins foster is saying that the foster is trying to develop himself you see again the old man comes old man says i go sweet fosters but with heavy cheer that means with like with heavy cheer fearing the rain of thy hopeless soul so again the old man is saying that uh, i go sweet fosters but i go with a sorrowful heart because of my fear that your hopeless soul may be damned so the says the old man says this and the old man goes away now again fosters of course fosters where is mercy now i do repent and yet i do despair hell stripes with grace for conquest in my breast what shall i do to shun the snares of death so fosters want to change himself so he's saying that fosters is a soliloquy saying that there is a curse on you fosters there is no hope of mercy for you now i do repent of my sins and yet i feel utterly hopeless utterly hopeless you see hopeless. my heart seeks the grace of heaven but lucifer tries to prevent my receiving that grace what should i do to avoid the trap of death now he want to have some mercy okay you want to repent and have some mercy from jesus christ so in the meantime when you're uttering okay like uh, mephistopheles comes there and the mephistopheles says that thou traitor fosters i arrest thy soul for disobedience to my sovereign lord revolt or i will in peace mill tear thy tear thy flesh so Mephistopheles get very angry because he is going Faustus is going against what you say Lucifer so Mephistopheles is saying you are providing a traitor to the devil that means he is saying accusing Faustus as a traitor a traitor as a person who is very much disloyal to his fellow mates or to his country so he is saying traitor to the devil Faustus I therefore arrest your soul for being disobedient to my supreme master that is Lucifer you must defy God or I will tear your flesh bit by bit into pieces so you must go against god otherwise i am going to tear you into pieces that was a threatening from mephistopheles now fosters become very scared okay very afraid of mephistopheles because mephistopheles has threatened him so fosters is saying sweet mephistopheles entreat thy lord to pardon my unjust presumption and with my blood again i will confirm my former vow i made to lucifer so fosters become what would you say um, he was scared of mephistopheles and he says that sweet mephistopheles uh, request your master lucifer to forgive me for my insolence which is totally unjustified i am prepared once again you see once again to confirm with my blood the promise which i previously made to lucifer because he made a bond okay a will with his own blood so he's saying that again i will do it but please don't get angry with me and please say to lucifer to forgive me and maybe stephen is do it then quickly with unfeigned heart let greater danger to attend thy 
gift. So maybe Mr. Pelissa, do then do so then quickly and do it sincerely. Lest you should incur our greatest penalty by allowing your purpose to change. So he again he threats and fosters says that torment sweet faint that best and crooked age that thirst distilled me from thy Lucifer with greater torments that our hell affords. So Foster is saying, sweet friend, that means saying to Mephistopheles, go and punish that low and crooked old man. Now see, he is saying to punish that low and crooked old man who dared to instigate me against Lucifer. He is saying, he is blaming to that person, that means the old man who instigated him to go against Lucifer. Punish him with the most painful tortures that our hell is capable of. So he, uh, Foster is saying to Lucifer to punish that. Uh, sorry, Faustus is saying to Mephistopheles to punish that old man. And Mephistopheles replies, His faith is great, I cannot touch his soul, but what I may afflict his body with I will attempt, which is but little oath. So Mephistopheles is saying that very sincerely, Mephistopheles is saying, saying that old man has an unshakable faith in God. Okay, it is not my power to trouble his soul. However, I shall try to subject his body to a much pain as I as I am capable of, but that will not amount to much. But I cannot do anything. Yes, I can give little pain, but I cannot do anything to the old man because the old man has got a faith to God. And Faustus is saying, One thing, good servants, let us crave of thee to glue the longing of my heart's desire that I might have unto my parama. That heavenly Helen which I sought to let, whose secret, whose sweet embracing may extinguish clean those thoughts that do distill me from my foe and keep mine oath I made to Lucifer. Now see Foster's is also, he got melted by saying Helen. Now he is saying a requesting to Mephistopheles. See what he is saying. One thing, good servant, that means saying to Mephistopheles, I request you to provide me. I want you to satisfy the desire with which my heart is aching. I would like to have as my mistress that Helen, whom I saw some time ago, and who has a heavenly beauty. Now see, he is very much impressed by seeing the beauty. Yes, definitely he will be because Helen is one of the most beautiful women in the world. Her sweet embraces will completely wipe out those thoughts which discourage me from keeping my promise in Lucifer. I shall then be able to fulfill my vow to Lucifer. So he's saying I can be able to. So he needs Helen now. He, and he's requesting Mephistopheles to bring him Helen. So Mephistopheles is saying, Faustus, this or what else thou shalt desire shall be performed in twinkle of an eye. So Mephistopheles with great confidence is saying, Faustus, this or anything else that you desire will be done in no time. Not only Helen, if you are better than Helen, then all I can, I can give you within a twinkle of an eye, within some few seconds. And after that, re-enter Helen. So Mephistopheles, bring Helen out there and see what Faustus says. Was this face that launched a thousand ship and burned the topless tower of Ilium? Sweet Helen, make me immortal with a kiss. Her lips suck forth my soul. See where it flies. Come Helen, come, give me my soul again. Here will I dwell, for heaven is in these lips. And all is dross that is not Helen. I will be Paris, and for love of thee, instead of toy, shall wait and but be set. And I will combat with weak Menulus, that means talking about Helen's husband. I'll say you in detail. Let's go through the text first. And where thy colors on my plumed crest, yet I will wound Atlas in the hell and then return to Helen for a kiss. Oh, thou art fairer than the evening year, clad in the beauty of a thousand stars, brighter art thou than flaming Jupiter when he appeared at hapless Semele. More lovely than the monarch of the sky, in wanton Eurasia's adjured arms, and none but thou shalt be my parama. Now see his desire, what he means to say here, let like me seeing Helen, he's saying, was this face, that means was this beautiful face, that means addressing to Helen, that means was this beautiful face for the sake of which the incomparable high building of the city of Troy were burned by the, you can say, invading Greek. Greek forces, sweet Helen, let me attain immortality by kissing you. That means he want to kiss Helen and be mortal. 
kisses Helen. See here. In the scene, you see kisses here. Her lips are so sweet that they have drawn my soul out of my of my body. That means as if his soul has totally gone okay, out of his body by kissing Helen. See, there is my soul outside me. See, see, there is my soul flying out there. It is not with me. Come, Helen, give me my soul back to me. He's asking, requesting, Helen, my soul is not with me, it is with you. So give me my soul. I shall always live here, close to Helen, because heaven is in her lips. Now, he is finding heaven in the lips of Helen, you see. And because anything which is not part of Helen's body is utterly worthless. I shall be another Paris. So he would be a Paris. I shall be another Paris and prove my love for you. I shall let the city of Wittenbach to burn to ashes, just as the city of Troy was burned to ashes for your shake. So he's comparing himself with, with Paris. He's saying, as for you, the Troy was destroyed and I will be a Paris now. And for me, if Wittenbach be burned, I don't worry about it, but I need you. That was the thing which was saying. I shall fight against your husband, Menulus, and after winning a victory over that weak man, because Menulus was weak, you say, for that he had trained as well. Okay. Shall wear, your, uh, shall, shall wear your insignia on my helmet, which will be decorated with a feather. Yes, yet I shall shoot an arrow to the great warrior Achilles. You know the Achilles we have already discussed. And wound him in the hill, which is his weak spot. Now we see, according to Greek mythology, Achilles has, was having weak a weak position in his hill. Okay, a weak spot. And then come back to Helen, receive a kiss from her as a reward from my from my exploit. Oh Helen, you are lovelier than the evening, evening year when it clothed with the beauty of numerous stars. You are brighter than the glittering god Jupiter when he appeared in, in all his glory before the unfortunate Samili, his beloved, who was burned up by his excessive brightness. You are lovelier than Apollo, the sun god when he was enjoying the pleasure of love in the blue arms of the amorous nymph Arithuasa, I shall never, I shall have you as my mistress and nobody else. Now these are all the desires by him. Okay. So next day, I'll be doing the next video. I'll send you Act 5, Scene 2. Thank you. Stay at home. Stay happy.